<clears throat> Coming from the qualifier stage on our online qualifier, defeating Sleep, Slayer Sleep in fact, and EG Puma of course coming from our stage qualifiers here live at Atlantic City. Very true, very true indeed. Puma, uh, one of the players that everyone expected to go through the qualifier. Uh, there's no surprise there. It would have been a huge upset for him to have been knocked out of the tournament. And here we go, we are live. So give it up for Evil Genius's very own Korean Terran Puma if you want him to win this match. Take it away, hype man. All right, well, in the bottom right-hand corner, we have got Liquid Hero, so give it up for Liquid Hero. <laughs> Terran versus Protoss on Shakura's Plateau. And you are the resident knowledge man when it comes to Terran versus Protoss. This is, you know, one of the maps that I actually think is pretty fair for TVP. Puma has excellent TVP. Mm -hmm. He is all over the place. He's like, uh, you know how we were heralding MMA's medevac play against yes. Zerg. He loves his uh, Marine Marauder medevac drops. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for Puma against Protoss. He is all over the place. He'll drop two different places at once while pressuring the front at the same time. I've seen him use early ghost builds as well. Hero, a, a solid all-around Protoss player that loves yeah. to sit back, play like a, a passive reactionary style, mm -hmm. and, and build up that huge, huge force and then ultimately roll his opponent. Yeah, so it sounds like we're gonna have a quick meta back abuse here coming out of Puma against Hero. And of course, the dropship lanes are pretty open here considering they spawn right next to each other. So it's not gonna be too hard to get a meta back in there and start to do some of that meta back play that you were uh, referring to earlier. Uh, one probe is being sent out right now by Hero. Gonna go ahead and check the uh, location for his opponent, Puma. And he is gonna find out that Puma did spawn in the bottom left-hand corner. Another thing about Puma is that he rarely misses his EMPs. He's so good about hitting the sentries and just taking away all the shields from the Protoss army. I've seen him win battles where, you know, from a supply perspective, he really shouldn't win. Uh, and he just hits very good EMPs and he has such good micro. I've actually been watching a lot of games of him recently, uh, especially in the EG Masters Cup and other tournaments that he's been participating in. He's just done a great job. For Have EG. you been able to pick up anything off of his playstyle? I know, like as players, we always try to watch our role model for our respective races. Try, try to get anything and everything to learn about their their playstyle. Have you been able to pick up anything? Yeah, the one thing that I've picked up from Puma is his ability to harass multiple places at the same time. But his ability to do it in a way that forces damage, he will drop the natural, drop the main at the same time, but that's after he pushes the front and forces the Protoss to pull all of his units away from those two locations. So, you know, we see a lot of players that are active with drop play. They right. love dropping, but Puma's the kind of player that ensures that his drops do damage by forcing the other player to make mistakes, and not a lot of people do that. All right. Well, we do have a hero here, and uh, hero, as you said before, really passive, conservative type of Protoss play. I've seen a lot of games of hero. He really isn't the type to get up in your face. He likes to get up as many bases as possible and play that macro game. So we're probably going to be in store for some fireworks once Puma starts that aggression on hero. Yeah, you never know though. Korean Protosses are capable of so many different builds mm -hmm. and and different types of all ins, but certainly. Uh, I would agree with that. Hero, a player that is, is a passive macro-oriented player. Well, we and do have a Stargate coming up here for Hero. Uh, we do indeed. That's what I was just about to say. That's a very interesting opener that hmm. I haven't seen for quite some time. He's also getting Warp Gate as well. Is he going to go up to three gateways here? Or is he just going to use two gateways? And then another uh, very important decision that he'll have to make is whether to go with Phoenixes or yeah. with Void Rays. That's going to point that out right there is, uh, is he going to go for the Void Ray or is he going to go the Phoenix? The Phoenix is much more of a harass oriented unit. Get in there, pick off the SCVs, go around the map, and it has some staying power towards the mid game for more harass. The so Void Ray is more of a unit that gets in there, gets in your face, does damage, tries to, uh, to, to uh, oh. win the game outright, and the SCV is going to get in there and it sees the Stargate with the Phoenix in production. That is so brutal. This is the type of build that you really want to catch somebody by surprise with. Mm -hmm. Um, now that he knows it's coming, Puma can prepare properly. He's getting uh, two additional tech labs right now on his Raxes. Yeah. That's interesting. A lot of tech labs going down. Probably going to try to get Marine uh, Combat Shields and Stim up 
at the same time. Uh, interesting to note that the Stargate, out of all the units, all the building producing units in the game, uh, it is one of the buildings that actually shows what unit comes out, so you can actually see if it's a Phoenix or a Void Ray. So Puma should be well prepared for the uh, Phoenix that's now in his base. Two Phoenixes in his base. He has quite a few Marines on the ground, and he is quickly upgrading concussive uh, shells. A mule is going to go down. Freshly dropped mule. You he tried saw, to repair yeah, that mule. You saw Puma right there try and repair. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, my God. <gasps> Looks like we're going to get applause, please, here. PP, of course. The Korean way to say pause. I think uh, something might be going on with Hero's computer. Yeah. We'd have a little bit of a hiccup right there. Chill, get out. <laughs> All right, so uh, while we figure out what's going on with Hero's computer, and you know, when there's this much money on the line, when you're playing at this high of a level of StarCraft II, everything with your computer needs to be absolutely perfect. Everything yeah. with your setup needs to be perfect. Couldn't agree with you guys more. And we have an incoming transmission. It's time to take some visine, man. Oh, is it? Yes. Are my eyes dry? Your eyes look quite dry, my Already? friend. Already? Take that shot of visine. I just took some during the commercial. Energize your eyes. It's so much better with you saying it while I do it. It's like, I'm part of the I'm commercial. Not, as bros, man, I'm not going to let you do that shot by yourself. Go for it, man. I'm by your side. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, all right. Now that, now that we can see perfectly, and it looks like both players, I'm like, I'm blind right now. I, I can't, can't see, see anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that both of our players are in the game and ready to go, uh, we are going to restart this match. I think we're ready to go anyway. Handkerchief, thank, my friend. Thank you, sir. Are we ready to go, guys? I don't know. Are we ready? I don't know, I heard what? we were ready. <laughs> yes. All right, well, UPP, and then we will unpause, please. Oh, I'm a spectator, unfortunately. I am a spectator as well. Well, this gives us a great opportunity to go and shout out our other sponsors. We've got Samsung here, our main primary sponsor, as you guys can see up behind us. We've also got Astro, Razer, Riot, Ga Riot uh, Mountain Dew, AMD. They just changed the slate on me, so now I can't call the rest out. <laughs> Team Liquid, Reddit, Visine. <laughs> Am I missing anything? I'm sure we are, but it's okay. Samsung. Well, IGN Prime as well. Yes, IGN Caesars. Prime. One thing about Razer, I actually use a lot of Razer products at home. I use the Death Adder mouse. I also use their Lycosa. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah, Razer does make awesome, awesome gaming products. And, you know, they're smart. They're smart guys. They yep. foster esports. They support the Anybody who that fosters esports, in my eyes, ugh are smart men. And it's weird. There's a, there's a lot of companies and a lot of groups that are involved in esports that profit off of gaming directly, but they don't deem it a, a worthy investment to invest back into the Here game. we are, pain user. We're right back into this game. It looks like the players went ahead and fixed their issue. Yes, sir. Clap away. I'm excited, too. <laughs> We've got Puma and Hero here, so what do you think we're going to see now that both players have established their second bases? Well, Hero needs to try and get something done with these Phoenixes. He is uh, going to pick off the SCV building the factory there, but right now, Puma doing a great job. Wow, he picks off another mule. Yeah, so that's two mules. One was a fresh mule, one not quite fresh, but still. Um, even having, having these Phoenixes scouted early on, he knew the Phoenixes were coming and he's still managing to stop all of this uh, damage from being done. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive indeed. The Phoenixes are moving around the back right now, not able to do as much damage. They've picked off a couple of meals here or there, but of course, they're still being quite annoying for Puma. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I completely said that wrong. Having scouted these Phoenixes, he's st Hero is still managing to do some damage, which is impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and he hasn't committed to any more Phoenix here. He just uh, has his little pack of three and continuing to pick off mules and, and SCDs when and where he can. I just like how his little pack here hasn't actually dwindled. He's kept this little Phoenix alive even though it's in the red. The shields are now beginning to regenerate. And the nice thing here is Puma isn't committing. As you said before, he's transitioning into a more standard gateway ball. He's getting plus one armor first, which I know you're a big proponent of for Protoss players. That armor, of course, reducing the amount of damage that Marines and Marauders do to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, armor first is certainly the way to go if you're planning on doing some type of a timing push or if you just want a lot more staying power for your units in general and that's a quick forge plus four gate i think hero might be looking to hit some sort of a timing here 
Uh, or, you know, he's just using the four gate, excuse me, defensively with the plus one armor. That's also a possibility as well. Oh, he loses one of his Phoenix there. That was the one that was in the red. Uh, went ahead and led up with that. So, um, I think right there he could have kept that guy alive. But he does lose one of his Phoenix. Still doing just a great job all around of keeping Puma in his base. He's got to keep Marines at the main, keep Marines at the natural. Puma, of course, now unable to hit that timing push that he would like to do. And another thing here is, I'm, I'm curious why Puma hasn't decided to throw down an NG bay, maybe just get one or two turrets so that he will be able to push out and not have to worry about this Phoenix. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, he does have the NG bay and he's getting plus one, but he's not willing to invest any money in turrets, which is kind of strange. And there we see another SCV getting picked off. Hero wow. is staying so active with his Phoenixes right now, and he did lose that one Phoenix, and losing that one Phoenix actually triggered Hero to start replenishing those Phoenix numbers. He has an additional two Phoenixes waiting at his Stargate right mm -hmm. now, and he has a fifth one in the queue, so I'm not sure why he's building all these Phoenixes. Maybe it's a response to seeing that there are no turrets in the base of Puma, so now that Puma's out on the field, he's out and about, he's moving around the midfield, these phoenixes could sneak into the main and do considerable damage. Yeah, like we said before, no turrets. That means those phoenix can definitely go in. And it looks like Hero may be gearing up for something like that. He's also now quickly chrono boosting ground weapons level one as he realized, hey, there's a ground force pushing out across the middle of the map. I've got to be careful because he may try to run up the ramp. Uh, one marine is attacking a probe on the top right hand corner. That is going to go down. But uh, for now, a bit of a lull in the action as both players tech up, build up, and get their armies ready to go. You know what I also really like about the Phoenixes is he can continue They're to sexy. deny medevac drops from all different angles. They are yes, sexy. they are sleek, sexy units that move very quick. But they can deny medevac drops throughout the entire game. He can rotate on the outside of his main. And, you know, Puma, one of those players I know I was talking about, it loves his medevac drops. Yeah. It's something that uh, he really relies on. And Hero, maybe using a custom tailored build to a player like Puma, really using his wow. phoenix is quite well right Picks now. off quite a few marines right there and his phoenix count has definitely tripled up at this point he's just shown how many phoenixes he has on the map triggering puma to go ahead and get an extra turret now finally has a turret inside the middle line picks off more marines in the production facilities here he's been doing some great work with these phoenixes once again and if he stays over the main, he can continue to pick off Marines that come out of the production facilities. Yeah, Hero stays so active with his Phoenixes. He never wow. lets up. He's continuing the harass here. Additional Marines going down, and look at that, keeping all the Phoenixes stacked right on top of each other, just skirting around the maximum range of those Marines, not taking any damage. And Whoa, he's going to pick off these medevacs maybe as well. Oh my god, he's going to get both the medevacs and he's going to only lose one phoenix for that trade. So worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think Puma's had just about enough of this. Yeah. He is pushing through the middle of the map right now. I don't know if it's a frustration push or if he actually wants to do uh, some serious damage here. He actually stopped up a little bit, second guessing himself uh, in the midfield right now. But look at this army from Hero. Two Archons have joined the mix now and he has a ton of zealots with charge. Puma oh, needs to be very goodness. careful. Yeah, and of course the Phoenix are still down to the south. We could have a possibly big engagement about to occur here. Uh, Hero has got has that charge lot Archon army. He's also researching Storm as well, so he could get a couple of Templar out and start to do some massive storms. EMP Shockwave being used on the Phoenix there to reduce their energy. I really like that play. He goes in, he picks off a couple of units, he lifts off the Ghost, so the Ghost cannot launch his spells. A couple of force fields going down, keep the charge lots away in fact great trade right there for hero yeah. hero is playing an amazing game of starcraft right, starcraft right now this is almost flawless i mean yeah. i can't think of anything that he could be doing better right now he has his third up and running he's putting cannons in the proper positions he's adding additional gateways now i'm loving it thus far the yeah. only thing that would be the icing on the cake for me is if he made a Colossus transition in the near future here because there are no Vikings on the field. Yeah. And the more ghosts that Puma is able to accumulate, the weaker this charge lot sentry archon composition becomes. Oh my god, he's warping in a Templar. Is he gonna feed back the Medivac? No, he does not. Oh, the Medivac is coming back. I don't think Hero is warping that in uh, response to the medevac. I think he was just making it for a storm. Oh, Unfortunately, no. it goes down. But it looks like Hero going to go right into the third. Going to attack that planetary fortress. Force Heal is going down to prevent the SCVs to repair. And the PF is going to go down. And that is a great play by Hero. And Puma was completely out of position right there. 
just now making his way back, but it is kind of important because he does have Hero's entire army stuck here yeah. on his side of the map, and he certainly has enough to kill it at this point. So mm -hmm. the question is, is how much economic damage did he take right there from losing the third, and how cost-effectively can he kill off the rest of Hero's army? If he can kill his army very efficiently, he'll be able to counter-push after this and do a lot of damage. Yeah, I'm surprised right there Hero didn't decide to leave a couple of force fields at the ramp to keep those forces from coming in and getting this huge concave on his um, now trapped units. And all the sentries are going to go down. So just like that, Puma destroying the entirety of Hero's army at the expense of a planetary fortress, yes. Um, but at this point, certainly Puma has an opportunity to make a counter push. But look how fast Hero is reinforcing wow, all so those charge many lots. charge lots. And look, the High Templar now as well with uh, additional storm energy to boot. No, uh, only two ghosts right now. He needs to hit these EMPs. It's so important. Well, it looks like the charge offs are going to go ahead and surround the MM. No stutter step micro from Puma. There it goes as he realizes some Templar were in the backfield. And here goes the storm getting launched over the MM. Those Marines and Marauders are going to get electrocuted to a crisp. Wow. Great micro right there from Puma. Hero picks up all of the ghosts and is now starting to work down the Marines. He loses wow. a few Phoenix there, though, and the rest of the Phoenix. Look at those Hardly Phoenix, any man. hit points remaining. Those guys were five-star airlines. They've now been demoted to one-star. <laughs> Crash safety rating just got demoted. Yes. Yeah, a few Phoenixes have gone down. Oh, oh they're all going to no. go down. Well, it looks like Puma here is going to have an opportunity to maybe pick off that top right-hand expansion. A uh, couple of charge outs coming out here. We all see here how Terran versus Protoss is so volatile. It just comes down to those spells. And just like that, Puma right back into this game. If he can pop off this Nexus, he's going to solidify his advantage. He's going to kill off several units here. Those three ghosts are so weak, and they're running to the back to stay away from the Archons. They've got to stay alive in this game. They could uh, retreat to the Medivacs. It looks like there are enough Archons and charge outs to push that away. So Hero holds on right there. How many probes did he lose, though? Oh, he my is God. Down. Unfortunately, those medevacs have no energy to get feedbacked. So true. He is down 42 to 51 harvesters now, so Puma has regained the lead mm. uh, in terms of economy. I think he's also ahead in army. Yes, he is indeed. So Puma managing to take back control of this game. I thought he was in a little bit of trouble there after he lost the PF uh, and, and traded relatively well mm -hmm. with, with Hero. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hero... The most important thing right there is he lost all of his probes at the third. He wasn't able to save the probes. Yeah. Puma saved a majority of his SCVs when he lost the third, and that's why he's he's ahead right now. And uh, both players going to come out relatively even here. Puma ahead on supply right now, 115 to 96. You know, Pinuser, I feel like we may have a reset now in this game as, you know, both players have three bases. Mm -hmm. Both of them have collided time and time again. They're tired of fighting. They're tired of the war. They're going to go ahead and settle down and start to rebuild, reestablish their infrastructure, get their units back on the field, and, and start to max out their army once again. However, like you said before, the Terran player, Puma, here has a supply advantage of 30. Uh, even though the SCV count is the same, Puma has been very, very cost-efficient towards the end of this game. Uh, and, of course, killing off all those Phoenix um, and, and using his units so wisely has helped him in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. And Puma going to resume drop play once again now, now that he has gotten rid of those pesky Phoenixes. Mm. Uh, it's opened him up to drops, and he's going to drop the fourth right now, and he will almost for sure be able to deny this fourth if he gets rid of this pylon relatively quickly here. There yeah, we go. The He's going to take out that go pylon. He'll force the cancel on the fourth here. Pack up and probably head out. Puma, not one of those players that gets too greedy. Doesn't usually lose medevacs full of units because uh, you, you have to be very careful with medevacs. Yes, they're super effective, but they're also very expensive and they carry expensive units. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. The medevac is going to go ahead and pick off that Nexus and he pulls out of there. That Templar, I like how Kira is waiting it in the back. A lot of Protoss players at the high level do this. They are prepared to launch that feedback, but it's very risky. You've got to be paying attention to the minimap. Otherwise, the Templar could just go down to the dropship. Uh, and we do have it kind of waiting in the back right here, so we may have that situation occur. Meanwhile, both armies looking to possibly engage here with the factory, the burning factory, scouting in the air. That's the burning flag flying through, man. And the burning factory making its way ahead. It might be able to get a beat on those high Templar, which yep. would make EMPing a lot easier for Puma. So Puma might just sacrifice that to try and uh, get in there and see what's going on. Puma, I think, 
has enough to win this battle with proper micro, but it's going to be really close. He uh, has six ghosts right now with ample energy for EMPs, and it's really going to come down to hitting those EMPs. Yeah. Getting rid of the energy on the High Templar, getting rid of the shields on the Archons, and he... Oh. Wow. Nice micro. Hit. Here we... Uh, <laughs> Both players just kind of uh, dancing the Ghosts and the High Templar back and forth. You'll see this a lot in late game TVP. It's kind of the dance between the casting units because a lot of the battle, whether you win or lose, revolves around those units. Well, it's going to come down for Hero if he wants to win this engagement because he's really outmatched in the supplier. Now, he's got to land his Storms, he's got to land the Feedbacks, and he's got to stay away from those Ghosts. Those Ghosts are oh so deadly for the Protoss army. That EMP Shockwave can come completely annihilate your energy and shields. Unfortunately, Hero just only has two Templar in the middle of the field. He's still forced to deal with this medevac, which has been so annoying. And you're referring to this in the beginning of the game. Puma is so good with this medevac abuse. Once again, there's the EMP Shockwave landing on some of the units in the middle of the field. A snipe goes off on a Templar and a storm going off on some of the ghosts, but the ghosts are very resilient. It takes quite a bit of damage to kill them. Puma's micro is flat out amazing. Wow. He is dodging storms left and right here. He is sniping the High Templar. He's EMPing all the proper units. Yep. And he even has a few Vikings. Oh, that's a big storm, but I don't know if it's enough. Those medevacs up in the air, able to heal the Archons on the low ground, trying to zap those m and but that's just not going to be enough. I think that Puma is going to be able to win this out. It's certainly a very close battle, but the reinforcements from Hero may be able to win the day. Yeah, Puma going to have to pull back here. Actually, maybe not. These medevacs wow. have a ton of energy. He's actually going to land these Vikings. There are no more gateway cycles available for Hero. Mm. And as soon as he loses those remaining units, that Nexus will go down. And I love... Oh, a bunch of Templar warping in. I love how Puma has these Vikings just in case of that Colossus switch that I was mm. talking about. That's so smart. He doesn't need Vikings right now. There's no business <laughs> having Vikings on the field. They're terrible combat units, but he's just covering all of his bases. He's ensuring victory, and There's victory he has. Puma with the win right there. That was a very drawn out turn versus Kurtas, almost approaching the 30 minute mark on Shakura's Plateau.